In this video, we're going to take a look at the different ways in which we can connect a three-phase transformer uh, or three single-phase transformers and how the different connections affect the secondary line voltages that we get. And we're going to go through the process of how we can do these calculations so that you are able to calculate all of the different potential voltages that you can get out of a single three-phase transformer or three single-phase transformers. Now remember, in both cases, we have three coils uh, in the primary and three coils in the secondary that we need to connect together, and we can connect them in one of two ways. The first way is we can connect them in a delta configuration. Remember, in a delta configuration, we are connecting the, the, the end of each coil to the beginning of the next coil and in a star configuration where we connect the coils all together at a single connection point over here. So that means that we can connect a single phase trans uh, three single phase transformers or a three phase transformer as star star. This means we connect the primary side of the transformer in a star configuration and the secondary side in a star configuration. Remember, that the line voltage on the primary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the primary side multiplied by the square root of three, and the line voltage on the secondary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the secondary side multiplied by the square root of three, uh, because both of them are connected in a star formation, and this is what the, the star uh, configuration would look like diagrammatically if you were asked to draw out what the transformer looks like. So on the primary side, we've got all three coils connected in a star formation. Every coil is connected together at one central point. And the same thing is happening here on the uh, secondary side. The, every, uh, the end of every coil is connected to a single point. And remember, because it is in a star configuration, we have uh, the ability to connect a neutral uh, to this single star connection over here. And we're therefore also able to connect this to ground. We can also connect the transformer up into a star delta. Now in this instance, uh, the primary side is connected in a star formation and the secondary side is connected in a delta formation. Once again, uh, primary side, the line voltage on the primary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage uh, multiplied by the square root of 3, and on the secondary side, the line voltage is going to be equal to the phase voltage because, remember, the secondary side is now connected up in a delta configuration. And this is what that transformer would look like diagrammatically. On the primary side, each the end of each coil is connected together at a single point. That's this point over here. And we've got the end of coil one or coil A connected to the start of coil two or coil B and the end of coil B connected to the start of coil C. Now, very often you'll find these, diagram, these diagrams labeled in uh, this kind of way. Uh, this might be labeled coil A, coil B and coil C. And this one is little a, little b, and little c. So here we've got uh, side one and side two and side one and side two and side one and side two and the same thing is happening at the top. So what we could say is that a2 is connected to b2 which is connected to c2 all at this central point over here and in the secondary side we can say that a2 is connected to B1, so A2 is connected here to B1, and B2, this point over here, is connected to C1, and C2 is connected all the way back here to A1. So that's how these diagrams work. Now obviously, we can connect this uh, three-phase transformer as a delta-delta connection. In this case, both the primary and the secondary side are connected in a delta configuration. This is what it looks like diagrammatically. 
And in this instance, the line voltage on the primary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the primary side, as for any delta connection. And on the secondary side, once again, the line voltage will equal the phase voltage. And obviously, lastly, the fourth configuration we've got is to connect up the transformer as a delta star. In this case, the primary is connected in a delta configuration, the secondary is connected in a star configuration, and as for all primary, so, oh, sorry, for all delta connections, line voltage is going to be equal to the phase voltage, and as for all star configurations, line voltage is equal to the phase voltage multiplied by the square root of three. And this is what that uh, connection type looks like diagrammatically. Uh, on the primary side, we've got delta. So the end of each coil is connected to the start of the next. And in the star configuration on the secondary side, the ends of all three coils are connected to the same point, And very often we take an earth uh, or a neutral from that very same point. Now, connecting up a transformer in a star configuration has some advantages. The first advantage is that the insulation around the coils uh, only needs to withstand a portion of the full line voltage. Now, remember that in a star configuration, the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. Uh, therefore, the phase voltage is equal to the full line voltage divided by the square root of 3, which is what we have over here. And um, well, 1 divided by the square root of 3 is really just 57.74%. It's just a little under 58%. So in a star configured uh, system, the phase voltage only needs to withstand or cope with uh, about 60% of the full line vo voltage. Not the entire line voltage, but just a portion, a, a little bit less than two-thirds of that line voltage. So it does mean that the insulation doesn't need to be as robust as it needs to be when you're connecting up a transformer in delta. Secondly though, um, a star configuration gives us the potential for a four-wire system where we can get two distinct voltages. We can either get the full three-phase voltage, which is the full voltage difference between any two lines, or we can get a single-phase voltage which is the voltage difference between any of the lines and the neutral point. Okay, so those are the advantages of star. Now, the advantages of delta uh, are simply that if one of the phases fails, uh, supply to all three secondary phases can continue, but only to about 57.74% of the full load. Okay. Right, let's have a look at an example. You are given three single phase 500 to 110 volt transformers. So that is really the same as the turns ratio. The supply voltage is 1.2 kilovolts. What different secondary output voltages can be obtained? Well, in this case, this 500 to 110 voltage transformer, that, as I said, is really just another way of writing the uh, turns ratio. So it's another way of saying that the turns ratio on the primary to the, the turns on the secondary is equal to 500 divided by 110. Okay, so just remember that if you ever see, sorry, that should be secondary, if you ever see a voltage, uh, sorry, a transformer given in this kind of way, 500 to 110 or 600 to 110, that's really just another way of giving you the turns ratio between primary and secondary. Okay, so we have got three single phase transformers. We can connect them in four different ways, either delta delta, star star, star delta, or delta star. Uh, the transformer is a step down transformer. We know this because the primary voltage is higher than the secondary voltage. The number of turns on the primary coil is greater than the number of turns on the secondary coil. And um, they've given us it, the, the, the uh, ratio as a voltage ratio, voltage on the primary phase to voltage on the secondary phase, which we know we can convert as the turns ratio to primary, turns ratio primary to turns ratio secondary. 
so 500 to 110. And they've told us that the primary line voltage is 1.2 kilovolts. So what can we do with this? Well, firstly, we can connect this transformer up as delta delta. Well, that means that the line voltage uh, primary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage primary side. And it means that the line voltage on the secondary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the secondary side. So let's have a look at some calculations. We know that the turns ratio primary to secondary is 500 to 110. And we know that the line voltage on the primary side is 1.2 kilovolts. Remember that is just another way of saying 1,200 volts. Okay, uh, we know from our transformer equation that the ratio of the voltages is the same as the ratio of the turns. It doesn't really matter which way round we write the ratio. Uh, we can write the ratio secondary to primary secondary to primary, or as we have it in this case, we can write the ratio primary to secondary, primary to secondary. Just so long as the ratio is the same way around both sides of the equal sign. You can't write primary to secondary on the left and secondary to primary on the right. Okay, now let's rearrange this equation just a little bit. Um, okay, so what I've done here is I've multiplied both sides of the equation by the phase voltage on the secondary side. So that's why it appears here on the right. And I've divided both sides of the equation here by the turns ratio, primary to secondary, which is why the turns ratio appears there in the denominator on the left-hand side. But we can write this equation uh, in a slightly simpler way still. And we can get that the phase voltage on the secondary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the primary side multiplied by the inverse of this fraction. So this was the turns ratio primary to secondary. The inverse of that is going to be the turns ratio secondary to primary. Now we can fill in some numbers to calculate our line voltage on the secondary side. All right, so the phase voltage on the secondary side is equal to the phase voltage on the primary side, which we know is 1.2 kilovolts. Why do we know that? Well, the phase voltage on the primary side is the same as the line voltage on the primary side because the primary side is connected in delta. So the phase voltage is still 1.2 kilovolts multiplied by the turns ratio secondary to primary. So it's the turns ratio here but not primary to secondary anymore rather secondary to primary so it's 110 divided by 500 and that is a voltage of 264 volts. So the phase voltage on the secondary side is 264 volts. Well, what then is the line voltage on the secondary side? Well, the line voltage on the secondary side is the same as the phase voltage on the secondary side because the secondary side is also connected in delta. So the line voltage on the secondary is 264 volts. Excellent. All right, well, let's have a look at another configuration. Oh, before we do that, this equation over here, uh, I'm not going to go through this, these two steps anymore. I'm just going to take this equation with me into all of the other uh, calculations. Now, you can choose to either remember this equation or you can derive it yourself very simply just by taking and starting with the um, transformer equation over here. doesn't matter which one. All right. So if we had the uh, transformer connected as star star, let's see what we would get. Okay, um, we know that the phase voltage on the secondary side is equal to the phase voltage on the primary side, but now the phase voltage on the primary side, because the primary side is connected in star, is equal to the line voltage divided by the square root of three, okay? Just simply dividing both sides of this equation by the square root of 3 to get phase voltage by itself means that the square root of 3 is going to become the denominator here underneath the line voltage. We know what the line voltage is. It's 1.2 kilovolts. So it's 1.2 kilovolts divided by the square root of 3 multiplied by our turns ratio secondary to primary, which is still 110 to 500. And that now gives us a phase voltage on the secondary side of 152 0.42 volts. So let's calculate the line voltage on the secondary side. Well, the line voltage on the secondary side is the phase voltage on the secondary side, which we've calculated here, multiplied by the square root of 3, which gets us an answer of 264 volts. That's exactly the same answer as we got 
for the delta delta configuration and I hope that you can see why in this case in this part of the calculation we divided by root 3 but in this part of the calculation we multiplied by root 3 so these or these this is a bit of arithmetic this dividing by root 3 and multiplying by the root 3 kind of they undo each other which is why we get back to the same answer let's have a look at the next one okay if we were to connect in star delta well primary side star secondary side delta let's do the calculations so the phase voltage on the secondary side is equal to the phase voltage on the primary side but because the primary is star we need to divide the line voltage by the square root of three to get the phase voltage which we've done multiplied by our turns ratio and that gives us 152.42 volts uh, we know that from our previous but now the line voltage on the secondary side well that's just the same as the the phase voltage on the secondary side because the secondary is connected in delta so now we get a different answer for the line voltage uh, in on the secondary side in this case 152.42 volts let's have a look at the last possible configuration delta star all right delta star the line on the primary is equal to the phase on the primary which means that the phase on the secondary is just the phase on the primary which we know is 1.2 kilovolts no change in the voltage because it's delta on the primary multiplied by the turns ratio 264 volts we've seen that answer before but in this case when we want to find the line voltage on the secondary we have to multiply the phase voltage on the secondary by the square root of 3 and that gives us 457.26 volts again a new answer so let's compare everything that we've got turns ratio was 500 to 110 line voltage on the primary side was 1.2 kilovolts so if we look at what the delta delta connection did for us we went from a line voltage on the primary side to a line voltage on the secondary side uh, from 1.2 kilovolts all the way down to 264 volts connected star star we achieved exactly the same step down so connecting delta delta is basically the same thing as connecting star star when we connected star delta we discovered that we could get a step down of 1.2 kilovolts all the way down to 152.42 volts and in delta star we step down from 1.2 kilovolts to 457.26 volts so once again delta delta and star star give us exactly the same step down ratio um, star delta gives us the greatest step down this was the lowest voltage we were able to achieve and delta star gave us the highest voltage that we were able to achieve in other words the least step down but many times when we're connecting a three phase transformer or three single phase transformers we also have different tapping points either on the primary or on the secondary side but let's take a look at this example very quickly we've got three different tap points we've got a minus five percent a full voltage uh, 500 volts and a plus five percent tap on each of the coils on the primary side let's see how we can use these to achieve a different set of step down voltages all right so here's some uh, nomenclature for you the 500 volt tapping we'll just call it n 500 and uh, that gives us a secondary to primary turns ratio secondary to primary of 110 to 500 okay we're dealing with secondary to primary because in all of our calculations we were dealing with secondary to primary um, that is a ratio of 0 0.22 the five the plus five percent tapping n plus five percent well that is a ratio secondary to primary of 110 that hasn't changed the secondary there's no tappings it's just the 110 volts but on the primary side it's 500 plus five percent of the 500 so that's 110 divided by 500 plus 0 0.05 well that's just another way we've got of writing five percent times 500 0 0.05 times 500 is going to give us five percent of 500 
And if we do that calculation, we get a ratio of 0 0.20952. And the minus 5% tapping, well, that's we can uh, demarcate as N minus 5%. That ratio is secondary to primary, 110 to 500 minus 5% which is 110 divided by 500 minus 0.055% times 500, and that is a ratio of 0.23158. So let's use these three ratios to see what different transformations we can achieve on the voltage. All right, delta to delta, there is our equation that we're starting with. Uh, the 500 volts tapping, well, the line voltage on the secondary side, we've done that calculation, it's 264 volts. But the plus 5%, well, we know that our turns ratio is no longer just 110 divided by 500. We calculated that. Our ratio is 0 0.29502, so let's use that in our calculations. We now get a phase voltage on the secondary side of 251.42 volts. We know that the line voltage on the secondary side is going to be the same secondary side is connected in delta, and the minus 5% tapping, well, that's 1.2 kilovolts, multiplied by this new ratio we discovered, 0 0.23158, that gives us 277.90 volts, so the line voltage on the secondary side is going to be the same, remember, secondary side is connected in delta. Let's go ahead and do the star star, I think you can predict what we're going to get, uh, the 500 volt tapping is 264 volts. We've done that calculation already. The uh, plus 5% tapping is uh, 1.2 kilovolts divided by the root 3. Remember, the primary is in star, so we need to divide by root 3. But we multiply now by our turns ratio. It's no longer 110 divided by 500. It's uh, plus 5% on the primary, so that's 0 0.20952. That gives us 145 0.16 volts, um, but if we multiply that now by root 3, we get back to our 251.42 volts, minus 5%, well that's the calculation there, that's the ratio we use, 0 0.23158 gives us 160.44, but if we multiply that by root 3, we get back to our 277.90 volts. Let's do delta star, uh, sorry, star delta. We know that's the answer we got before. Uh, the plus 5% tapping, we're using our same ratio, 145.16 volts. So our line voltage on the secondary side is also 145.16 volts. Secondary, remember, is in delta. Minus 5% tapping, we use that as our new ratio. We get 160.44. Uh, the line voltage on the secondary side is 160.44. Secondary, remember, is in delta. And let's do the last one, delta star. At the 500 volt tapping, we get our previous answer of 447.26 volts. Nothing has changed there. At the plus 5 tapping, uh, the phase voltage on the secondary side is 1.2 kilovolts multiplied by the turns ratio, 0 0.2952. That gives us 251.42 volts. But now we need to find the line voltage on the secondary side. Because the secondary is in star, we have to multiply that by the square root of 3. And that gives us a final voltage of 435.48 volts. The uh, minus 5% tapping. Um, well, we're going to use the ratio 0 0.23158 to find the, uh, the voltage, uh, the phase voltage on the secondary side. And to find the line voltage, once again, we multiply that by the square root of 3 because the secondary side is in star. And that gives us a voltage of 481.33 volts. Well, now we can compare all of the answers that we've gotten so far. For our 500 volt tapping, these are all the answers that we got originally. Nothing changed. 264, 264, delta, delta, star, star, give us exactly the same result. Star delta gave us the lowest possible voltage, delta star gave us the highest possible voltage. But by using the 5% tapping, we were able to achieve a whole new set of voltages. Uh, however, once again, delta delta star star, there's no real difference between those two. Star delta, though, gave us a new voltage, 145.16, even lower than what we got before, 
Well, that makes sense because plus 5% on the primary means that we are increasing the number of turns on the primary. So obviously, that is going to lower the voltage on the secondary, which is exactly what we get. And delta star gives us a new voltage as well, lower than what we got for the very same reason. We have increased the number of turns on the primary by 5%. Using the minus 5% tapping, so delta delta star star give us exactly the same results. Uh, but they are greater than the results we got previously because we are reducing the number of turns on the primary. So, of course, the voltage on the secondary is going to increase, and indeed it has. But star delta gives us a new voltage, 160.44, greater than what we got at the 500 volt tapping. Makes sense. We've decreased the number of turns on the primary by 5%. And delta star gave us the greatest voltage 481.33, again, greater than what we got before because we have reduced, <coughs> excuse me, we've reduced the turns on the primary coil. So we can see now that we can achieve basically uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different secondary line voltages from this one transformer by changing what primary tapping we use, the 500 volt, the plus 5%, the minus 5%, as well as what connections we use, delta delta or star star, star delta or delta star.